Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart. We are back with the Ted Show, but better yet, we are back with the one and only Kendra Davies with Stellar Life Coaching. What's up, Kendra? Well, hi, everybody. How you feeling? Oh, so good. So good. What is today? Good. I don't even know the day. That's how good it is. I got is nothing. I couldn't tell you what day it is. <laughs> well, you look amazing. You Thank know you. I love this topic, meaningful co connections. But here's what I want to do before we do that. I want people to know who you are for the, I don't know, people, you must be under a rock if you don't know who Kendra Davies is. What? Uh, tell us a little bit about you and Stellar Life Coaching. Sure. So my name is Kendra Davies and I own Stellar Life Coaching here in Orlando, Florida. I am a positive psychology practitioner and a life coach. And uh, my shtick is that I help my clients identify, define and cultivate their own happiness. Nice. And we want to be happy. We do. We just we choose do. a lot of weird things other than happiness. But yeah. I think one of one of the things that would make people more happy mm -hmm. is establishing and maintaining meaningful connections. Yeah. So when you suggested this, because that's our, you know, that's our little routine. <laughs> you tell me what we're talking about, and <laughs> I jump for joy. Um, I said this is this is so needed. I can't tell you how many events, especially uh, during COVID, these these later times in COVID where I'm sitting there and I'm like, Hey, you're in the corner and you have a mask on and you're not talking to anybody. Yeah. You don't know how to build a meaningful relationship, let alone maintain one. Cause it's one thing to say, Hey, Kendra and I get along. We had a great connection. It's another thing to foster that and care about it and take mm. care of that connection. And so that is why I love this topic. So when you picked it, why, why did you choose this? So I chose it for actually a few reasons. One, I think that for all of 2020, for myself, for my clients, for everything that we're all collectively kind of going through, having meaningful connections with other human beings is kind of the sustenance that keeps it going. Yes. And it's also the part where I feel the most lack, right? Like, for what I do, I'm used to seeing people in person. I have physical contact and connection. I'm a hugger, yes. So now my poor son, who's eight, is just basically like, can you please get out of me? I, I, don't, I don't need any more hugs. I know you love me. You know, it's like the, the connections that I have are so deep and so meaningful. The clients that I'm working with, I adore and love, and I feel so deeply connected to them. And then my relationship with my son and my friends, like the people who have been active and present, you know, the people who are trying to, and okay with doing like Zoom nights, you know what I mean? Like the people who, who I, I and they have remained committed to having meaningful interactions, right? Where, and don't get me wrong, it's not that it's meaningful every single interaction, right? Like, well, let's define that. What is meaningful yeah. connection or meaningful interaction? Because I think people will go, well, I gave them my business card. Mm. Um, so, talk about what the definition, as far as you're concerned, of meaningful interaction, meaningful connection. To me, meaningful connection is. I show up as my authentic self, yes? And yes. you show up as your authentic self. And together, we create a meaningful experience. One where it's not just how's the weather or awkward, <laughs> weird conversations where we're just trying to avoid the discomfort, right? Like, it's not platitudes. It's, you know, and this is where Ooh, I think- I love it's, that word. Very nice. It is, I think it is a mix of vulnerability and authenticity, and then being able to get on a, a call or a, a, have an interaction where you're honest. Like, this is hard for me. I'm here, I'm willing, but, I, but, but it's hard, right? Yes. Like, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm here, you know? Uh, meaningful connections force us out of our comfort zone a little bit. They challenge the way we think, the way we perceive, 
uh, ourselves, a situation or a person, I think the most valuable friendships I have are the people who say, I don't know if I think the way you're looking at this makes sense. Right? Yes, I don't want a yes person in my life. I don't want somebody yeah. to yes me to death. No. I, I, want to sh I want to share something with you and then I want you to um, positive psychology me because it's on this topic. Okay. So I think that meaningful, meaningful connections for me is where I felt something. I don't necessarily have to define what that something is at that moment, but I felt something. Either my soul felt it, my heart, my spirit, something there. Mm -hmm. And what I get accused of is a really hard word. This is my word. But what, what people perceive is that everyone is my friend. How can everyone be your friend? Mm -hmm. And so I think we have varying levels of meaningful connections. And I think we also, because... We don't know. We're so used to putting labels on everything. We don't know how to go. Well, I really liked Kendra when I met her at the networking event. So is that a meaningful connection? Is that is that what that was? Or how do I make it better? I think people are so confused mm. by how to actually um, define it and go with it. For me, I like a lot of people. Does that mean I have a meaningful connection with each one? I don't know. It depends on the day. Sometimes I want to not talk to anybody, but that doesn't necessarily define whether the connection is meaningful to me. And just because I have one doesn't mean that they had the same experience. So talk to me a little bit about people that said, I have a million friends. I'm that person. I love everybody. Yeah. So tell me I'm, a little bit about your well, thoughts. And I don't think that there's like a... Uh, like I'm not dodging the question. I just don't think that there is one standard definition. Like you said, I can have yes. a meaningful connection with the lady, the gas station attendant. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It can be a, a meaningful connection based on the circumstances that surround a moment, right? Yes. It, it can be a smile from a stranger. It could be me letting somebody merge into my lane, right? Like it could be simple. And then it can be deep and complex. It can be, I'm afraid of this COVID stuff. And like, I can hear that and be present for somebody when they talk about hard things for themselves. Yes. You know, like it could be any variety of those things. I can give you an example from a networking perspective. And, you know, originally we were gonna talk about meaningful connections the week before, and we were supposed to host Winning Wednesday, which is- yes a monthly networking event that Stellar Life Coaching has hosted. And uh, unfortunately, I was not feeling well. But the, the idea here was that I have always struggled with networking. Like, how do I make these connections um, meaningful, right? because I always felt like networking was dry and like, you know, hey, my name's Kendra, it slices and dices, here's my business card, let me get your email address, I'm gonna add you to my email list. You know I, I mean? hate it, but yes, I um, know. It just felt gross and then- I feel after, dirty, like I need a shower afterwards. Yeah, and then I walk out and I've got, I've got I could have 50, 50 business cards, but I would be like, I'm not going to call any <laughs> Like, I didn't I have a meaningful connection yeah. with any of them. Now, does that mean that it was incap that I was incapable of it? No. Does that mean that they didn't want a meaningful connection? No. It's that I perceived networking to be gross. You know what I mean? Like I perceived it that way. And with Winning Wednesdays, what we did was we found, I asked myself, how can I make this a meaningful engagement? And I had to ask myself, what are my strengths? What am I good at? What am I comfortable with? And I love teaching and I love learning. And I like having conversations about topics that are hard and challenging. And I want to talk about how do you create meaning in your life and how do you practice gratitude? And I want to talk about how do you have difficult conversations, right? Like I want to have those conversations. Now, if I could do that and meet new people <laughs> and learn about your business, in that context, I am creating a meaningful engagement. I'm no longer just stellar life coaching or just a life coach. I'm Kendra Davies. I'm a human being. This is a topic that I know something about. What do you know about? Correct. 
So I want to share something that, and I agree, and I, I think you and I could teach a series on networking, the do's and don'ts, um, because we all need it because it's a very weird place to be. You're thrown into an environment where there's a whole bunch of people you don't know, and you're supposed to all of a sudden develop a meaningful relationship. It's a connection. It's, it's very challenging. So recently, I left my company that I was with. And one of the things that I feel like I have learned a lot in the past two months is the value of meaningful connections. And so there were people that have reached out to me out of the woodwork when I left mm -hmm. um, that I didn't even know were paying attention that remember an event we were at. Could have been one thing where we shared that moment and they're congratulating me and they're saying, I, I want to figure out how we can collaborate. Yeah. The impact, the, the impact of that, if you can actually make those connections, it sky's the limit. And I think what's beautiful about what you just pointed out is that you didn't even know it. I didn't like know. what happens is that Ted Bogert shows up as Ted M. F. N. Bogert. <laughs> and then that has impact. When when we talk about being authentic, right? Like for me, I would walk into a networking event and I would think thoughts like, you know, I get that you own this business, but like, are you tired? You know, how, how is your relationship with your partner? Yes. Are you exhausted like I am? Cause I'm an entrepreneur and I work a bajillion hours a week and I am exhausted. What do you do to feel connected to yourself? Right? Like Excellent. what does your business do to make our community better? Like I wanna have those kinds of conversations. I don't wanna know just about your ideal client Right? Yes. I'm going to get that information based on knowing who you are as a person. Does that make sense? Yes. And if I don't have a meaningful connect, if I don't have, even at that moment, because mm -hmm. I also believe there's, there's levels of meaningful okay. connection. So mm -hmm. if I don't have it at that moment and all you're doing is spouting or spitting your business at me, I'm done with you. I haven't heard a word you've said, and I can't wait to move to the bar to get a mm -hmm. double after I have listened to you pontificate about your crazy marble business, yeah. throwing that out there. But I think people underestimate the value of leading with that authenticity and that vulnerability. Yes. So even if I'm having the interaction and being and saying, hey, I understand that. What about this? Right? Like being able to not quit. Like, don't get me wrong. I I am me all the time. I'm I'm a unicorn and I understand. And I'm not Here's the unicorns. <laughs> I am not everybody's favorite flavor, right? Like, uh, uh, I have a friend. He's like, he's like, I'm, you know, I'm the guy in the bar dancing around, having a good time, asking you where do you, where we go when we die? You know, like, yeah, you know, like I want to have deep conversations. Yes. But I'm also like, I can still dance it out with you. I can still, I can still be in this moment and have this experience, right? So how do we show up authentically? Like at what point in time did we compartmentalize that this is work and this is me? And then this is me at home and that this is me with my best friend and that this is me with when I walk into 7-Eleven, right? When you really reflect on those moments, let them be with a stranger, uh, somebody that you don't even speak to, uh, the kindness that you see or witness from somebody else, that is a meaningful connection. When you really strip it down, those are moments where you are most you. Yeah. Even if you're just witnessing, you're in your car, you're in your zone, you're jamming out and you see somebody give money to um, a homeless person right? And you feel moved or swayed by that. In that particular moment, you are not showing off for anybody. You're not trying to get anything from somebody. You're just being you having a moment. If you think about uh, a connection with your child or your partner or your or, or a coworker or a friend, right? If you really analyze those moments, you are actually just being you. And in being you, you're able to connect and give people permission to be themselves. Yes. Does that make sense? I love that. I think people, one of the things that I work on and I'm, I'm always working on it is listening. And I think that if you can figure out how to perfect your listening skills, 
that your meaningful connections mm-hmm. will be inundated with them because people want to be heard and they want to be heard in a way where you can give them real feedback, not the, oh God, I haven't heard a word you've said. I've been looking at my phone the entire time. Yeah. They want something meaningful. They want to, they want to be validated and they want to, and if you do that for someone once, they never forget it ever. I have people that come up to me that I don't know from events I've been at. And I, they run into me at another event. They're like, well, you spent a few minutes with me and I really appreciated that. Mm-hmm. That's just my MO. And trust me, yeah. it's a long time coming. So don't, I'm not bragging. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, no. I'm, I've evolved and I'm yeah. still evolving. But the power of that, the mm-hmm. power of it. I forget if it's Maya Angela who says they don't remember what you um, did or say, but they remember how you how they felt um, because of your presence, and that is so powerful. That's a meaningful connection to me. And here's the thing: I think that for me, when I considered networking, I looked at it like I was showing up, so they had to come to me. You know, like, I'm just gonna. This is my seat. At this table, I just let them rotate out. Yeah. Speed dating. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here and let you guys come talk to me. And funny enough, they never came. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, I have great ideas. I love my business. I love what I do. I'm super passionate, and I actually have a very outgoing personality. You right? do. But when you drop me off at a dinner party, I'm like. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> like, just, right? So one of the things, and this is kind of ties in beautifully to what, what you just said about listening, is I created kind of an arsenal of meaningful questions, like questions that I am generally curious about with people. So if it is a business networking event, then I'm curious, why did you decide to start this business? Yeah. Why did you choose to be a pharmaceutical sales rep? Like <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, give me your why. Like, what is your purpose? Like, how does this thing align to who you are as a person? Because when I frame my question to not be, tell me who you, who's your ideal client? I am in a position to get a meaningful response. Yes. And when that person tells me their why, like they say, man, I haven't thought about why I started this business 20 years ago in like years. But that's a real question. I had one recently and I'm hoping that person's not watching, but I'm going to call them out. Um, they kept asking me about my personal health and fitness goals. Well, if you know me at all, you know, that is not really in the scheme of things. Um, and so, but they're in that business. Yeah. Thought, oh, come on. It's so thinly veiled what you are doing. You're not trying to make a real connection with me. You're yeah. trying to get me to say something that will then allow you to sell me something. That's not a meaningful connection. That no. isn't real because you're doing it with this. You have this ul- ulterior motive and you're not really listening to what I'm saying. You are anticipating how my reaction or my answer is going to benefit your business. And I find that appalling. Well, and I think that really what it comes down to is, is again, we compartmentalize. We say, oh, I need to make money and I need to make, get clients. So I'm going to go to this networking event and my goal is to get clients, right? Right. When you walk in with that mentality, a few things happen. You're not looking for meaningful connection. You're not. You're looking for dollars. You're looking for something to execute on. You're looking for an opportunity to uh, be in a spotlight, right? Like even if it's just one-on-one, you want to have the opportunity. Well, what are your health and fitness goals, right? To me, I would have meaningful questions that could kind of go beyond that. Like when you think of health and fitness, what does that mean to you? Yes. Because then, then I can hear you. You'd be like, listen, I don't work out. Right. But I went through, I went through X, Y, and Z and I learned about like the molecular structure of kale and how it helps my fucking pancreas. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is that what it does? Because I surely need to know. No, I have no idea. I'm making shit up. You know what I'm saying? But like, but you can change that question and make it open-ended and meaningful to get a meaningful response from the person you're talking to. 
I can't walk into a room and be like, so you ever work with a life coach? Half the planet doesn't even know what a life coach is. Do you know how many coaches do that though? I you should know. Take a class on that. When people walk up to me and, and they'll say, so what are your business goals for 2021? You know what I know is happening? They're trying to get me to buy something or they're a coach. They're trying to cut like, I'm like, you're not even interested. All you're trying to do is get your, it's disturbing questions is what we say in sales. You're trying to disturb me and make me think. Yeah. Well, that's not a meaningful relationship. When you really want to know about me, that come that shines through people. If you're asking me some prepared question that you really are just trying to get to the nitty gritty and make a dollar, mm -hmm. I'm going to smell it from a mile away. And I think people need yeah. to understand that that authenticity, authenticity, people can tell the difference. And here's the thing. Like, I still want clients. It's not that I don't. It's not Correct. that I'm looking to host a workshop for your business. I do lunch and learns. You can contact me on my website. It's not that I don't want to do that. Right? right. It's that when I walk into that event, what I know that sticks is that if I choose that I want to have meaningful connections, I don't want superficial stuff. I don't want to just collect 50 business cards and be like, oh, that's a success. Yes. I going to walk out and be like, man, Dave was really, really insightful when it comes to health and fitness. Like I really, really loved his approach and the way that he talked about being healthy, right? Dave, I'm going to make the connection for Dave. I remember, I think I was, uh, it was either, I was on with you or I was on with Dan Pacheco and he was talking about a realtor who did ballroom dancing, right? Yes. And how, if you're a realtor, like, why would I know that about you? But that guy, I still think about that guy. And that was six months ago. It was of one course. conversation six months ago, but I made a meaningful connection to this stranger. Because, because it was real. Yeah. He wasn't going, hey, Kendra, tell me about your next home you're going to purchase. Or yeah. there was a real conversation. If you come at me, I feel that my least favorite is when somebody throws their business card at me. Mm. I, I check out and I'm old and probably curmudgeonly when I do it. But I'm like, you and I cannot connect right now. I'm suggesting that you find somebody who enjoys that. I need to go back to my drink. I think it's super important too. If that connection doesn't appear to be meaningful, you don't have to sit there and listen. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole. I, I hope that I want to inspire you, Ted. Yeah. I want you to feel empowered. Yes. That when that person is doing that for you to look at them and say, you know what? I want to take your business card. But I also want to let you know that I was hoping that I could have a meaningful connection to Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Here's two options. I can take your business card and I'm going to go to the bar and finish my drink. Or I want you to ask me one question about me that could find a connection point between the two of us. Put the ball back in their court. Because I can tell you as somebody who is awkward at networking, if I'm coming to you and I'm just nervous and you're Ted Bogert, right? And I've seen the Ted show and like, I'm like, I'm trying to, I have been thinking of the way that I'm going to approach you, right? So I want to come off as confident. I want to come off as assured. I want to, I want to impress you. So I'm going to walk up with my business card, like, boom, <laughs> Kendra Davy, here you go. Right? Now you're making me feel bad. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is that the assumption is that if I don't have a meaningful connection, it's because you don't want it, but that's not true. It's that's that correct. We are not taught how to do this. Nobody ever pulled me aside and said, Kendra, you're an outgoing introvert. Networking is going to be challenging for you. Get a wingman who's willing to do all the funny ha-has and you get to come in and be like, so what advice would you give your younger self if you could go back in time? You know I'm I mean? the wingman, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. So like when you, especially for you, Right. When you have the bandwidth and the time, don't get me wrong. I'm sure not every event you're looking to teach folks how to do this stuff, but like, I'm, I'm in, not. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in those moments, right. Where you feel so inspired, try kicking the ball back. Like, Hey Dave, I don't really have very many health and fitness goals. I appreciate your approach. I'll take your business card. If that's really what you're, you were hoping to get from me. Right. Or you can ask me one more other question. And we can try to find a meaningful connection and kick the ball back. And think about, I love that because that's what I do. I mean, I sound like I'm callous. It's probably because it was 
the 35th person that that networking event that asked me the same stupid question. Um, I also think it's good to, to really engage with them. What you said is so important. I want to know how we can collaborate. I think if you push back and you go, all right, I'm interested. Tell me how you, how you and I can collaborate. And you take that, you take that away from them like, oh, he's going to send me a ton of business. Holy crap. Now I got to show up and work with him and collaborate, mm -hmm. which guys, by the way, I could do an entire series on collaboration, but a lot of people will either move toward it or move away from it. But then you'll be able to know that you did the right thing. I want to collaborate with everyone. Everyone's a potential friend, mm -hmm. meaningful connection, business, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But you have to start somewhere. And I think that if yeah. you push back a little bit, you're right. I need to be empowered. I need to not just look down at my drink and go, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes you do, right? Like sometimes you do want to do sometimes that. Sometimes I, I, don't have, I don't have the bandwidth to coach you through how to connect with me. You know what I mean? Like I'm a coach. That's what I do for a living. So if I'm at a networking event, I'm probably not going to be in that mindset. But if I know not every time, but if there is a time where there is an instance where you see that somebody is genuinely trying to connect with you. Yeah. Like I being agree. willing to say, listen, I hear you, right? I I noticed this in you. I've seen it in myself and I've seen it in others. I would rather have a meaningful connection with you and then put your number in my cell phone instead of taking your business card and throwing it away when I get in my car. Yes. Okay. I love that though. You're, you're giving and you've done it the entire show and we're about out of time. You have given everyone some tools to really figure out how to overcome because like you said, it is not easy to a approach people. Mm -mm. Um, for most people, it's a very scary thing going to a networking event. It's like speaking in front of people. You're just, and then you have to talk about you you think it's easy to talk about you. All of a sudden, you're having to talk about you, and you know mm -hmm. um, you've been told you've got to have a 30-second elevator speech, all this BS stuff that's mm -hmm. been thrown at people. And instead of focusing on the real you, you focus on all of these other things that people have told you. Yeah. And so you're right. It is difficult, and I know I'm coming across like a crass person. I have just been at many of these, and I want yeah. to help people. I want them to be successful at it. I watch them. We're here. That's why we're here. And if I can, I think that one other piece that I think is really important, and it's about the authenticity and the vulnerability piece. Like, cause I don't think when I use the word vulnerability, I think I feel people like start to be like, Ugh, like no. Yeah. Do know. I have to tell them about that little secret closet in my house? No. no. That's not vulnerability. That's not what I'm please, talking about. Please don't. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. But when it comes to like the approach, right? To me, it is vulnerable for me to make the first move to approach you at a networking event. For me, for Kendra Davies, that is hard. It is hard for me to walk up and be like, hi, my name is Kendra. Like even doing it here, I feel ridiculous, it's right? So funny. However, when it comes to deciding to show up, and we've talked a lot about choice on this show, right? Like yeah. underneath all of the, the things that we talk about, it's about choice. If I make the choice to have meaningful connections, I'm making the choice to show up and be authentic. If I make the choice that showing up and being authentic is saying, hi, my name is Kendra, networking is hard, but I'm curious, I loved your tie. And I just wanted to come over and say hello yes. and see if I could learn more about you and hopefully you'll be gentle on me, right? Like, yes. if, if that is where I'm at, I have to be willing to be authentic and vulnerable and say those things like, hi, I'm an introvert. That may not mean anything to you, but I don't know what to do with my hands right now, but I'm here because I wanna be better. And you look like, I've seen you talk to 50 people tonight and I would, I would love to know more about you. I love that. That right. is, to me, that is literally laying it out there mm -hmm. in a way that the majority, I would love that because yeah. I'd be like, all right, they're being real with me. You want yeah. people to be real and you want to be real with people. That's the most real you could do. Then I would stop and listen. Yeah. I would. 
And sometimes you don't struggle with that, right? Like in some instances, I can walk into a room and I feel like I'm feeling myself, my hair is right, like I feel good and I can and I can just navigate it and it's not hard. And in those instances, I have my questions. I'm not kidding. I literally have a list of, I have a notes section in my phone with questions because it's hard for me in the moment. I'll lose my words. I'm just nodding and smiling like, yes, God, I hope they like me. <laughs> I love that you're sharing that as a coach because I think that vulnerability, you can't make that up and there is power in vulnerability. And vulnerability doesn't mean, again, you tell us about your secret closet or you have to divulge uh, your biggest fears, but if you can give people a piece of you that's real, they it will resonate and they will begin to give a piece of themselves that is real back to you. All right, Kendra Davies. Tell us how we can reach you, how people can book one of your consultations, which why haven't you already done that, people? You've been watching forever. Tell us all about it. Sure. So if you would like to meet with me, I offer a free 30-minute consultation. Uh, so you can go to StellarLifeCoaching.com. You can fill out a contact form or you can call me uh, directly. You can also text the number on the website. Uh, you get a free consultation. I do uh, lunch and learns, workshops for businesses, small groups, retreats. Um, if you are curious, if you're a lady and you are curious about working with me, I am hosting a workshop called Breakthrough um, this Saturday, actually, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we're focusing on fears and limiting beliefs and breaking through them. Nice. Uh, working with a yoga teacher. We're going to do some mind body stuff. It'll be wonderful. So if you're curious or interested about that, I've got two seats left. So reach out. Let's see if we can Fantastic. make it. All right. Go to stellarlifecoaching.com, which is scrolling across your screen. Thank you. That was amazing. Thanks for all your insights. People should take this and study it and implement it at your next networking event. Thank you, Kendra. Love you to pieces. Thank You're amazing. You. Love you too, buddy. Bye. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.